Welcome everyone to another part of the satellite reception series. Today's video is going to be the very first one in the series which is going to act as a direct replacement or a direct update of a, of a previous video. Specifically is going to be the video I made about GAC reception or the global area coverage reception from the NOAA weather satellites. Now by the time I upload this video the previous one will be made unlisted but there will be a link in the description if you want to go ahead and watch that one for some additional context but I will be sort of going over everything again so even if you haven't watched that video or even if you have randomly stumbled upon this video on YouTube and you have no idea what's going on I want to give you at least some basic idea but if that's the case I do recommend that you watch some other videos and you read read up on on the topic of satellite reception anyway as I have mentioned GAC stands for global area coverage and it is a radio downlink a radio broadcast used by the older generation NOAA POES weather satellites. These are the exact same weather satellites that also transmit APT and HRPT. As of right now, that only means there are three remaining NOA POES weather satellites. It's NOA 15, NOA 18 and NOA 19. You probably already know all of this. If you do know all of this, then you also know that when you are receiving images from these weather satellites as they are passing above you, you aim your antenna at them or you use an omnidirectional antenna for APT and you are able to download images directly from these satellites in real time. And when you do that with APT and HRPT and even LRPT with the Russian Meteor satellites, what you are seeing, the, the resulting image that you get, is exactly the same as what the satellite is seeing at the same time as you are receiving it, right? It's a real time, it's a direct broadcast. If you think about this, that cannot be how these satellites are actually supposed to work, right? Because if you are the actual operator of this weather satellite, if you only had direct broadcasting from these satellites, they would not be very useful for like global climate and weather prediction models. And in fact, the vast majority of weather satellites do not have direct broadcasting at all and only have a primary stored data downlink, basically. All weather satellites, as they are flying around the Earth, as they are orbiting the planet, they are collecting the data using their instruments and they are storing that data on board. Then when they are passing their own mission control station, mission ground station, which can be one station somewhere or it can be a, a network of multiple stations, the satellites start to basically play back all of the stored data. It can be data collected during the last orbit, it can be multiple orbits at once and it only has a couple minutes to do that, right? If you have tried receiving one of these weather satellites, you know that one flyover of the satellite at maximum is going to take like 15 minutes and that's if you have very good line of sight conditions so it has to use very high data rates very high frequencies high data bandwidths basically not practical to receive by amateurs with hardware like this it's the exact opposite of everything that makes apt and hrpt so easy to receive gac which is the stored data playback specific to the noaa poes weather satellites 15 18 19 is extremely easy to receive in comparison it's actually like unusually easy probably mainly thanks to the fact that these weather satellites are based on quite an old design uh, i believe in the previous video i said that these weather satellites use magnetic tape for data storage meaning they do not have much data capacity on board and uh, that is partially true uh, i did look it up NOA 18 and NOA 19 have switched to solid state data recorders however NOA 15 still uses magnetic tape for data storage and playback however in order to not make any like substantial changes to the mission, even the new solid state recorders of, on NOA 19 and NOA 18, they are used in the same way with the same capacity, same data quality as the older generation tape recorders. So nothing has really changed between NOA 15, 18 and 19. So not only can these recorders only store data from one orbit at a time, they have to do so with reduced resolution on the main imager of the weather satellite. You are going to see that in this video. But what we mostly care about is the frequency and bandwidth. So while most modern weather satellites or most modern satellites in general use a frequency of at least 7 gigahertz in the X-band and data rates upwards of like a couple dozen million symbols per second, the GAC broadcasts from these three NOA satellites are not that different in terms of both frequency and data rate from existing HRPT. So to understand why I had to remake this video, we need to talk about the radio transmitters that these satellites normally use for HRPT. If you have tried receiving HRPT or if you just read about it, watched some of my previous videos about it, you know that there are three frequencies that these three weather satellites use for HRPT. Each of these satellites has 
has all three frequencies available currently. Each of them is using a different one. However, they can in theory switch between them, assuming that there are no technical limitations, technical issues with the satellite, which there are. We don't really need to get into that. The frequencies are 1698 MHz, 1702.5 MHz and 1707 MHz. They are used by NOA 19, NOA 15 and NOA 18 respectively. So under normal circumstances, assuming that everything is functional on board the satellite, what would happen is that one of these three frequencies would be dedicated to the HRPT, real-time broadcasting, and the other remaining two would be dedicated for GAC stored data playbacks. That's the sort of original configuration. By dedicating two frequencies to the data playback, in a way I have been able to use two data recorders in parallel, basically doubling their data capacity and you are doing two transmissions at the same time. Again, doesn't really matter for this video in particular. What does matter is what the globalists don't want you to know is that there is a fourth transmitter, a fourth frequency that these weather satellites can use and that is 2247.5 MHz. While the previous three ones have been in the L-band quite evenly spaced apart around 1.7 GHz, this one is somewhere completely else, it's almost like 500 MHz higher and it lies within the S-band. Now I've already made a video about the S-band on this channel, there's also going to be a replacement of that very soon hopefully, assuming my hardware arrives, but what this fourth transmitter has been utilized by these satellites for. It's for telemetry, it's for housekeeping, it's for maintenance, not for the primary mission purpose, not for HRPT. But as these satellites have far exceeded their expected operational lifetimes, NOA doesn't really have the same value in them as operating some of their modern weather satellites. So what has happened recently is that NOA transitioned the, the mission control of these three remaining POES weather satellites to a commercial provider to a private company basically. I believe it's Parsons and it has some other subsidiary. Not important for this video once again. What is important is that during this transition of the of the mission control of these weather satellites some changes to the transmitter configurations have been made. If you've been only receiving HRPT there haven't been really any changes to the standard frequency so you might not have even noticed anything but if you have tried to receive GAC the way I described it in my video, you might have noticed that sometimes the satellites would skip these time slots and eventually they just stopped transmitting completely. What actually happened is the frequencies that have been previously used for GAC in the 1.7 GHz band have been basically moved to 2247.5 MHz into the S band. Believe it or not, that is not the biggest change that has happened. The biggest, most substantial change there is great news for me, it's probably bad news for you, depending on where you live in the world, is that it looks like they are no longer using their American ground stations and instead have transitioned to a KSAT ground station, probably in Svalbard, which is somewhere behind me, way up north, and it does look like all three satellites are only using this S-band frequency and only this one ground station. I mean, it's possible they are using some other ground stations somewhere else in the world that many amateurs cannot really receive. There are many KSAT ground stations if you check out their map of commercial ground stations. But as of now, as of December, early December 2023, it appears that all three weather satellites, every single time they are passing close to the North Pole, in line of sight of the Svalbard ground station, they initiate a GAC transmission on 2247.5 MHz and they are not using any of the previous ones. Which is why my previous video where I've shown you using effectively my HRPT setup to receive NOA 19 GAC has been invalidated completely. So with the change in frequency, which is a quite a substantial change from 1.7 GHz to 2.2 GHz, also comes the need to change the hardware used to receive these transmissions. What I have next to me should in theory work. I have the S-Band 2250 MHz, left-hand circularly polarized helical feed. These transmissions are right-hand circularly polarized, meaning that when you are receiving the reflection from a dish, you need to invert the polarization. And supposedly they are also not, they are not too weak. A dish like this, an 80 centimeter diameter, or this is like 75 by 80, whatever, it could work. Probably something like a meter or more would be better. However, the biggest issue when receiving a 2.2 GHz is obviously most SDRs, are not able to go that high but that doesn't really matter in case of RTL SDR or the new like any SDRs because the data rate of GAC is just slightly above of what these SDRs are normally 
able to receive. They are around 2.7 million samples per second, meaning that you need at least like 2.7 or 2.8 million samples per second from the SDR. RTL SDRs and any SDRs can only receive 2.4, sometimes 2.5 million samples per second. Ideally, you would use like 6 million for GAC. So that completely rules out RTL SDRs and any SDRs just in terms of the bandwidth alone, but even the frequency 2.2 gigahertz is higher than what these cheap entry-level dongles can usually receive their top out around 1.7 and 1.8 gigahertz. I have the HEC RF so that can receive directly that frequency. It has more than enough sampling rate for this. However, you also need an amplifier and I also briefly mentioned that in on this channel in the S-band video before and then the new like Hamid's down converter video, you do need a special kind of amplifier for the S-band, something like the new like Sawbirds Ghost has a filter inside that only lets 1.7 GHz through, it's not usable at 2.2 GHz. And getting that might be difficult. I mentioned in the video about the S-band converter that you can buy MMDS converters, which are intended to be used for like digital TV distribution, they can be used for satellite reception, and I have two of them on order, they should arrive this month and there will be a video about them. But until then, I don't really have a usable amplifier for the S-band. I do have my amplifiers that I built, they are admittedly okay, but not good enough. And there seems to be just something wrong with my setup. The, the, the signal strength that I've been getting at 2.2 GHz has not been very good. So what I could do right now is actually try to find the root of the issue and fix it and see if I can try to receive the GAC transmissions at 247.5 MHz with a dish like this, or we use brute force. Let's use brute force. Okay, so let's very quickly go over the setup that I'm going to be using. This this will hopefully be the only handheld portion of this video, so I know you you don't like the unstabilized footage. For the antenna, obviously, we are using the 250 centimeter offset dish. Here's the focal point assembly, which just swings down from the top for easy access. Here we have the feet, as you can see. Over here, if it will focus, 2250 megahertz. Left hand circularly polarized helical antenna, 5.8 turns, 0.14 wavelength spacing. For our amplifier, I am using this, the Sawbird 2275. Now this is not a real Nualec -like product, I need to say that, this is not something Nualec -like makes or sells. This is a Nualec -like Sawbird Plus GOES with a replaced filter. So this is these are the internal this has the internals of a Nualec -like Sawbird Plus GOES, except the band pass filter has been exchanged for the mini circuits BFCN 2275 and then we have a lot of coax we have this small jumper here then this quite thick coax but the connectors are quite lossy like five meters of it because that goes all the way around the arm from the back of the dish here it transitions into another coax like TV coax and then finally goes into the bias T which I built in a previous video you can watch that and that is connected to my cheap Chinese HECRF clone. And finally we arrive at the computer, which as you can see already is receiving some signals. So these are some of the very strong inner set, or I guess this would be util set, signals at 2199 megahertz, which confirms everything is working. But I am a bit afraid that the loss in the cable will be quite high. The amplifier is also not ideal. It probably does not have enough gain to compensate for everything properly. It's not even properly tuned or anything. I literally just replaced the filter, didn't tune anything. I do not recommend you do this to your own amplifiers unless you know what you are doing, which I don't. Okay, everything is ready, everything is set up. The audio is also going to be garbage because I can't use my USB microphone because the computer will be recording the signal. NOA 15 is about to rise from below the southern horizon in about four minutes from now. This dish, the way it's mounted, cannot aim higher than roughly 40 or 45 degrees, so we would not be able to track the full pass anyway. But as I said, that doesn't really matter too much because the GSC transmission will only start once the satellite gets quite low again above the horizon in the north. However, I still want to show you receiving the signal, you know, acquiring the signal right above the southern horizon because what we will see on the frequency is not GAC, but HRPT. Uh, what I have sort of neglected to mention, and it is quite substantial, is that not only was GAC moved from 1.7 GHz to 2247.5 MHz, HRPT has been basically copied to that frequency. So what is happening right now 
is all three of these weather satellites, NOAA 15, 18, and 19, they are transmitting HRPT in parallel, simultaneously, on two frequencies. They are transmitting on the usual frequency where you would normally receive it, so either 1698, 1702.5, or 1707, but also at 2247.5. Once I aim the dish at NOA 15, right above the horizon, we should be able to see HRPT appear on the computer screen, basically, just as if we were receiving at 1702.5 MHz. Again, to reiterate, this is not what you would normally need. This is what I need because the rest of my hardware sucks. If you would want to see me receive these signals with a smaller dish, with something that you can also repeat on a budget, then stay subscribed because that's what the next video is most likely going to be about. NOA 15 has just reached zero degrees. It is now parallel with the horizon. So I'm going to turn on the LNA, I'm going to move the dish and I'm going to put a recording from SDR Sharp on screen because clearly you cannot see the laptop screen from your point of view right now. All right, I'm going to start rotating the dish antenna and we'll see if we can receive anything. All right, I am starting to see the signal. I'm gonna have to face away from the camera, I'm sorry. Believe it or not, it's quite difficult to aim this dish. Oh, there we go. I was aiming somewhere completely else. Look at that. So the beam width of a dish antenna gets bigger. I mean, gets smaller as the dish diameter gets bigger. Which, mean that, which means that bigger dish antennas, despite giving you a stronger signal overall, are going to be more difficult to aim. They will require more precision. Which is especially difficult with a dish setup like this, which was not meant for tracking lower orbiting weather satellites. But as I've said before, this cannot aim high enough to track the full pass, so I'm not too bothered about the signal consistency. You know, you get the idea. It's HRPT. That's enough of that. I'm not going to even bother trying to decode this, because even if we did get a long section of the HRPT signal, because it is currently night time, we would not really see anything besides the some cloud imagery in the medium and long wave infrared light channels. However, GAC, because it's a full orbit playback, not only are we going to see the section the satellite imaged while coming here from the south, we're also going to see the other part of the planet, the other half of the planet. I believe we should be able to see North America in daytime, most likely Antarctica. We're gonna see, depending on what part of the GAC broadcast we can actually capture. So I'm going to move the dish to the other side. I'm gonna track the satellite until it's at about 30 degrees. Then I'm going to get back to you. And we are gonna see if we can record the GAC transmission starting and if we can decode an image from it. Okay, so I have rotated the dish around and away 15 has just passed the zenith point directly above. I'm gonna start the recording. Three, two, one, now. That way I can sync it with the video and it has 44 degrees. So now, if I take the dish, I should be able to reacquire the signal at full strength, or at least close to it. Okay, there it is. It is still a bit high, but the satellite is going to get lower. So it's going to slowly drift into the beam of the dish antenna. You can see it happening right now. The signal is getting stronger. And in a couple of minutes, or at any minute, there we go, now we are aimed. You will see the modulation of the HRPD signal disappear. We will see just the carrier of the signal, of the transmitter, no modulation. And then after that, we should see the JC broadcast start, which will appear like one very wide digital signal. It's possible the transmission will be at an even lower elevation, it won't be usable for me but we have NOA 18 and 19 as well as backups today in case we do not receive the GAC transmission from NOA 15 at this current time. So now I'm just going to focus on trying to keep the dish aligned because as you can see, I'm losing the signal. Okay, there we go. Now we have the carrier. It's, it looks like it's overloading my SDR quite a bit. And that's the GAC signal. Okay. And it is very weak. I don't think this is usable. This is very weak. Yeah, 
The signal is already disappearing. The satellite is already well below the tree line. Unfortunately, this is not going to be usable. So I'm just going to cut my losses. Uh, so unfortunately, we did not have much luck with NOA 15. NOA 19 is going to be passing in 59 minutes, pretty much the exact same path. I'm gonna go home, I'm going to recharge the computer, recharge the iPhone, and we are going to try again with NOA 19. And if that fails, we're gonna try again with NOA 18, even later. Okay, so I went over the previous footage and I did notice it is quite grainy, quite noisy. So I've positioned another light now, hopefully that's going to make it slightly better for the phone. And I'm also using the microphone now because we are waiting for NOA 19, the computer is not being utilized currently. I'm not sure how much of the previous footage I'm going to use in the video, so I'm just going to go over our current status right now. So I tried receiving NOA 15 JC, I was actually able to receive it, unfortunately the signal was very weak. The signal started, the, the JC transmission started when the satellite was already quite low, near the horizon, below trees. The, there are quite tall trees in the north, you can't really see them right now, you've probably seen them uh, in one of my previous videos. As I said, the signal was actually strong enough to get some decoded image from it. We are going to take a look at it at the end of the video where I'm going to be going over the entire decoding process once again because that has also basically changed. But quite concerningly, something that I've noticed in that image is that it's flipped. Uh, I said that before I started receiving NOA 15, what I said was that I don't really care about the full GAC transmission, because as long as I get at least clean signal on the beginning, during the beginning of the transmission, that is when the sunlit side of the Earth uh, or, or the imagery of the sunlit side of the earth would have been played back, basically. So if I get weak end of the transmission, it doesn't really matter because all I'm losing is a bunch of night imagery, which is not that interesting to me. I mean, you can still use the infrared channels. Unfortunately, it does look like the current configuration, in the current configuration, the GAC transmission plays the data in reversed order. Unfortunately for me, that means that the satellite eff effectively starts with the last line it captured and then goes backwards, it traces its own orbit backwards. And it's a big issue because that means that the imagery I'm getting at the beginning of the transmission, which is when it will be the strongest, most consistent with the lowest amount of noise, is imagery of this, of, of right here, of Europe, of night. It's night imagery. So if I want the daylight imagery that, I've ma that I'm mainly interested in, I would need to capture at least the second half of the GAC transmission at a high enough signal strength, at a good enough signal consistency to actually get some usable image from it, which I'm afraid is not going to happen, at least not in this video. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm gonna prove myself wrong, I don't know. Okay, so... Something quite unusual has just happened. As you've just watched me, I tried tracking NOA 19 once again. The GAC transmission started way too late for me. While the satellite was already behind the tall trees in the north, so it was too weak, unusable. However, as you can see on the screen, you either can see the screen or you can see me, whatever. But you have to believe me that what is currently playing back on the screen of the laptop is quite a strong, at least comparatively strong, GAC transmission. It's getting a bit windy, so I'm gonna try to, to make this quick. Uh, of course, when I was not recording, after I finished tracking NOA 19, I tried turning the dish and aiming at NOA 18, which was, as I said, passing just a couple of minutes behind it. But the pass, the east pass of NOA 18 was quite low. I did not expect to get anything from it, but it's quite the opposite happened. I got the strongest GAC transmission of the day from the lowest pass of the day. Uh, that's probably because there are not as many trees in the northeast part as there are in the north. So the, this transmission was at around 8 degrees above the horizon. And it's like twice or even three times stronger than the transmission I got around like 14 or, or 12 deg degrees from NOA 19 and NOA 15. So this suggests that what I, what I have to do is actually focus on these earlier passes that are in the east or in the northeast instead of the overhead ones that just go north. Unfortunately, I've missed all of those today already. So what I think I'm gonna do right now is just wait for tomorrow and repeat everything I've done today and see if we can actually receive some of the 
stronger transmissions in the northeast, at least from, from my position relative. So I'm going to end this for today and I'm gonna see if I'll have better luck tomorrow. Okay, so unfortunately I wanted to record two more passes today. However, as you can probably hear, it's extremely windy outside. Not only is the wind very cold, I'm freezing, but I'm gonna be honest, I'm not comfortable being near this dish when it's so windy. Right now it's kind of gone down a little bit, but yeah, when the, when the wind really pushes on this surface area, look at that, you probably see how it moves. That's a heavy dish. If it falls over, this could legitimately kill me, so I'm going to try to move it in a higher elevation so it doesn't catch the wind as much. Yeah, I actually recorded something that might be usable for this video, for the purposes of this video, so I think I'm gonna leave this dish alone for now, after I turn it up. Yeah, that's gonna be really sketchy climbing onto that now. Okay, anyway, that's the status, basically. Oh, and this dish also fell over, I didn't even notice that. Okay gamers, here we are with the 720p laptop and it is time to take a look at the software side of things. The software portion of the GAC decoding. These are all WAV files recorded from SDR Sharp and it is the four GAC transmissions that I have received. We can take a quick look at them just to see what we have to work with. Here's the first one from NOA15, here you can see the baseband preview, so this is all HRPT. And around three minutes into the recording as you have seen before we can just play it back here you can see the hrpt signal stops we have a carrier for a while then the then the gac modulation begins and then the actual gac wideband data broadcast starts and this is the actual signal that we care about we can zoom on it with sdr sharp take a look at the whole progression of the signal you can see in the beginning it's a bit stronger and, and near the end it starts starts to trail trail off and eventually i just stop tracking the satellite completely so the signal disappears because i see that it's already getting quite weak near the end there's no point trying to track it further so this was my first attempt with noa 15 the next one after noa 15 was noa 19 which went about the same or actually worse you can see again we have the hrpt signal once again it gets turned off as the satellite is preparing for data playback we have only the carrier the, here it is much cleaner than before and we have the gac transmission begin and immediately you can see it starts fading away this entire section of the of the recording is basically without signal so this is also not very usable and then finally we had the noa 18 transmission which you can see is much better that was the one that I forgot to record with the phone because I was not expecting to get anything near this good. You can see again HRPT stops and GAC starts and this is much stronger than before. Nicely visible above the noise floor and you can see it, it just uniformly trails away. It doesn't fade in and out like before and it, it also eventually does get quite weak but it's, it's much better and much, much more consistent and then finally the last one I received was from NOA19 again and you don't really see anything. You should be able to see the data there. It's just barely above the noise floor. However, and I, I did want to just give up and stop tracking, but I think it was the satellite was passing behind the tree during this portion of the recording. But then as you can see here, the signal starts to get stronger and it does get to a point where it's like may be usable we're gonna see with the decoder so that's the four recordings we have to work with they are not the best by any means but as a demonstration for this video it should be enough i live in the czech republic which is like roughly in the center of europe so if you live in europe anywhere north of the czech republic you're going to have much better access to these gsc transmissions the satellite the satellites will initiate these transmissions at a much higher elevation relative to your point of view. If you are further south, it's going to be more difficult, but it can be doable if you actually get good line of sight. Hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate much better once my S-band converter arrives. So again, I say this in this video, the performance I'm getting should not be used to compare your own results against, at least not yet. But 
Again, perfect examples to give you a realistic idea of what you may receive from the satellite. So now we actually want to get some images from it. In the original video, I have shown you how to do it with Lineage RPT, which still works. You can demodulate the signal, then decode it into the actual image. But since that video was released, the set dump processing software also got an update, which brought some, in my opinion, much needed features that will now basically give you the identical input as what you have what you would otherwise get from lean hrpt so if you are already using set them for lrpt apt hrpt whatever you may be using it for you can just keep using it for gac as well and because we use a lean hrpt in the last video we're gonna use set dump in this one when you first install and open this software you're going to see your list of different satellite downlinks what you mainly care about right now is GAC. Then of course you select one of your input files. So let's start with the first one from NOA15, which is this one. It should automatically set your sample rate that you used. If, if it's a wave recording, the same you would get from SDR++. If it's a raw recording from something like GQRX, I think this will be able to read the file name and set it as well, but it's worth double checking the formats and sample rates make sure they are set correctly. Then you select the output directory. For now, I'm just going to select the GAC folder and I'm gonna show you the output that you get from it. Input level baseband, because this is a baseband recording and then frequency shift. So this is something that I forgot to kind of mention. Depending on the SDR that you are using, uh, you will notice that I have the frequency, I, I have the recording offset. So the signal is at 2247.5 megahertz. It's centered around that. Obviously the exact frequency will change as the Doppler shift of the passing satellite takes the signal downwards in frequency. However, I have chosen just 2247 megahertz as my center of the recording. And the reason for that is if we go to a portion of the recording where there is no signal and we zoom in, it might not be very visible because it's filtered out here already, but you can see there's like this dip, there's like this null where there is no signal. And that is because this has been recorded with the IQ correction feature turned on. If I had the recording without the IQ correction, what you would see instead of a null, instead of a dip in the signal would be a big spike, which is of course produced by the HECRF and the HECRF, at least the one I have is notorious for generating a very strong DC spike, basically at the very center of the frequency range that you have tuned in. And this can be an issue, I think, it might not be, it, it may not impact GAC much because it's a wideband modulation. I'm not sure if the carrier is used to lock onto it, but something like HRPT where the demodulator in the software is actually locking onto this carrier in order to demodulate the signal. If I did have my center of recording set to 2247.5, then eventually this carrier of the HRPT signal would pass that null, it would pass that dip in the spectrum and this beacon, this, this center carrier of the HRPT transmission would temporarily disappear, which would result in the demodulator unlocking and you not getting any image data for a couple of seconds, basically. Now, this will happen regardless of whether you have IQ correction turned on or off. If you have it turned on, then it gets filtered out. If you have it turned off, then there is a spike which may interfere with the demodulator. Set dump does have its own IQ correction feature. Here is DC blocking, but again, that can only mitigate the issue. It cannot fix it. So what I recommend you do with any kind of recording basically is that you record with, for example, a 500 kilohertz offset. So here we are tuned 500 kilohertz below the desired center frequency. So what we have to do, not this, we have to go to set dump and set the correct frequency shift. So we want this entire frequency to be shifted 500 kilohertz down. So we take the zero and replace it with negative 500,000 hertz. And now when we press start, set down will shift this entire spectrum 500 kilohertz downwards, which will place the center of the HRPT and therefore the center of the GAC signal at the center of the recording. Now the last option that you see here is backwards GAC. You can see the description of what it does sort of in the in the tooltip box, but basically as I've kind of mentioned it in the video before, when the NOA satellite is transmitting the GAC imagery, it can do it either in normal order, where it starts at the beginning of its last orbit and then just goes to the present time, 
or it can start with the last line is recorded and it goes in reverse, traces its own orbit in reverse. Lineage RPT does not have this setting because it detects the modes, the order of GAC automatically. I suspect Setdown will eventually implement this as well, but for now you essentially have to kind of guess. I know already that all of the recordings I have are reversed or backwards, so I just enable this. Year override, we don't really need to do anything with that for now. I don't want to go too much in depth into Setdown because I would not be able to cover anything nearly as as much in detail as their own website which will be linked in the description as well as the download links and everything like that. So now I would press start to demodulate. So I'm going to cut my audio recording for now and do the decoding process. So I'm going to do this as a voiceover. Uh, what you are seeing on the screen right now is Setsdump demodulating and later it will be decoding the GAC signal. Uh, for the biggest part of the decoding process, in my case, it's not going to see, it is going to see a signal, but it's not going to be synced, it's not going to be decoding any frames from it, because obviously it's expecting GAC, but what it's getting for the biggest portion of the recording is actually HRPT. You could just start the recording later. If you are really fast, you can start the recording just as the carrier starts, and then you will have maybe enough time to aim your dish back at the satellite or you just don't care about the beginning of the GAC transmission at all, which is valid, I probably won't next time either. Of course, Setdump also has the ability to demodulate in real time, where you don't need to record a WAV file or an, or an IQ file at all. It also has its own recorder if you do want to record it. I am once again using SDR Sharp for recording because, well, I like recording the signals and then demodulating later, but mainly for videos like this, the SDR Sharp file player is, is very useful. So you can do you can do real-time demodulation as long as your CPU can handle it, which most modern processors will be able to. Once the HRPT signal shuts off, you will see that the GAC signal starts and we do actually get a lock in set dump and it will start producing some frames. The frame counter should start going up. Then eventually, as the signal trails off, the lock will get weaker and weaker until the demodulating is finished. When that happens, the decoder will run through all of the demodulated data, and once that is finished, Setdump will actually start saving the actual image output, and that is what we are going to take a look at right now. Okay, so here we are back in Setdump. We basically, it basically just returned us to the beginning after the demodulation has finished. And if we go to the folder that we have selected as our, as our output directory, you will see that there's now many more files than there were before, specifically this one and then all of these. The different folders are the actual instruments or the sensors that Setdum has decoded from the satellite. AVHRR, of course, is the main imager, then we have HIRS, that's the infrared imager, AMSU is the microwave imager. If you actually want to see the image you have decoded, you go to the AVHRR folder and here you have a bunch of different composites because this is kind of how Setdum works at this point, this doesn't seem correct. Don't look at that. But if you actually want some, if you if you actually want to load a specific composite or if you want to do projections, you go back to set dump to the viewer tab, and here it should have automatically loaded the data set. Here we have the four instruments that it has decoded. We have AVHRR, we have HIRS, SEM. This, this is kind of special. Let's talk about it later. And then we have the microwave imager, which I mean, let's also talk about it later. First, let's start with AVHRR. That's the main star of this video, that's what actually gives you an image. However, we don't see an image here, that is because we are not looking at a visible light band. As I mentioned in the video, because the GAC transmission is in reversed order, the very first thing the satellite transmits is imagery of Europe, which happened to be at night time, so we don't get anything in the visible light channel, I believe is this one. So we go to the image tab and we can pick which channel we actually want loaded in, in the viewport. So channel 1 on AVHRR on NOA water satellites is visible, red. Channel 2 is near infrared, but we want something like channel 5, which is long wave infrared. And you can now see that we do actually have an image here. Because this is an infrared channel, it can actually see the clouds at night. We can actually go to the RGB composites and see if maybe we can get some false color from this, which I think would have to be the short wave infrared channel, no, medium wave infrared channel, this one, channel 3B, and yeah, we are now using multiple infrared channels to get some sort of false color. Now we are actually starting to see some land, 
this is the Suez Canal, I think. The best way to kind of view, view the GAC imagery, even though this was a very short pass, we only got a very small part of the data, you already see that the aspect ratio of the image is just stupid to, to look at like this. So we can go to the projections, go to the projection tab, and let's see if we can actually generate something from this. Hopefully my audio is not going to get desynced, but as you can see here it is. Now, because the signal quality was not the best, it may struggle a bit. You can see that the border lines don't really line up, but that is simply because the, the image data was so noisy that the timestamps that this decoder actually depends on are mostly going to be incorrect, so it's not gonna be very easy to, to project this. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go back to the offline processing and I'm going to load that NOA18 GAC transmission, which is, I think, the best one. I'm going to run that through set dump and I'm gonna get back to you once we have this one loaded. But actually, before I do that, before I forget, I want to take all of this and just put it in some other folder so that set dump doesn't get confused as to which file it is decoding. I'm just going to copy the file name of this to the folder. This is why it's kind of important to create new folders for different passes. Uh, I should also probably mention that if you want to save your decoded data, if you actually want to like archive it or if you just want to keep it for, for future reference or just, you know, keep it for, you know, it, it's a cool thing to keep. Obviously the theoretically best format to keep it in would be WAVE, but I mean, look at that, that's eight gigabytes, seven gigabytes. Uh, keeping baseband files, it's not very efficient, even if you compress them. So instead what you kind of want to store is this, this frame file. So this is the actual raw data. You can see that's eight megabytes. That's almost 1000 times smaller. And it contains all of the data from all of the instruments. Do not just store these PNG files or JPEG files. Do not store image files store these actual raw files. In case of NOAA, it's going to be the, the FRM files, frame files. In case of Metop or Meteor, it may be the CADU file, something else. So what I would do normally is I would rename this to the same name as the recording and I would keep this somewhere. And then if I want any images from that, I can just redecode this frame file which would work the same way as the WAV file, except instead of baseband input level, I would select frame. So for now, I'm going to keep it as baseband and I'm going to decode the NOA18 recording. Okay, and here it is. The decoding of the NOA18 image of the NOA18 data has finished. So this is still the NOA15 from before. We want to switch to NOA18 now. And you can see the huge difference. So this was NOA15 and this is NOA18. It's, it's not showing the same zoom level, but this is actually zoomed out even more. And you can see this is channel one. This is the visible red channel and we actually have some daylight. And I'm not going to tell you what this is. Well, it's, it's very noisy, so it may make it difficult to actually tell what we are looking at. I'm not going to tell you what it is right now because we are going to do the projection first. Actually, let's get rid of the NOA 15 data set for now. I'm not very used to set dump yet, as you can tell. Let's just do the visible light composite for now or the visible light near infrared composite so we can actually see what part of the illuminated world we are looking at. But if you think about it, you probably already know. Uh, enable the projection. Where is it? And let's generate it. Wait for it. Hopefully it's gonna work better. The, and it looks a bit scuffed right now. And that's because we are using the the equidistant projection centered at the North Pole. So what we have to do is change this to negative 90 latitude, generate again, and you can see that this should be better already. It does look like set dump is having trouble projecting around Antarctica. So I think the way to fix that is using the old algorithm for now. And there it is. So as you can see, it's still not perfect. We are missing quite a few lines because, I mean, you see it over here, the, the image is noisy already at the beginning where it's supposed to be the strongest. And then the noise just gets so bad that the projection doesn't even know where to place those lines. So it just kind of doesn't place them. But you can kind of see the illuminated part of Antarctica. So if, if I was actually able to get the signal stronger and keep it for longer, uh, what would happen is, so the satellite, because it's going in reverse order, when it starts the GAC transmission, it starts transmitting these lines, slowly goes 
across the South Pole and then it actually continues and it would go like this and I think over here is very distorted North America so it would kind of just it would, it would basically just continue and transmit the full orbit so if you actually had a proper GSC data set you can play with these projections you can use the new algorithm which will give you much better results than this one but this one deals with the noisy lines better but I think you get the idea let's let's project one of the infrared channels or the infrared composite yeah so now we can actually see some of the land mass now you can see it better what kind of continents we are looking at so this is the Middle East this is the this is actually the east coast or east coast of Africa we even get a little bit of Madagascar here like very very tiny part of it let's see if we can even see anything in the not projected uh, this image is upside down let's rotate it so I think the satellite was flying Listen, I'm not I'm not best I'm not the best at geography. I think here's where the United Arab Emirates are. Here will be Yemen or Oman or something like that. Here we have East Africa a little bit, little corner of Africa. And Madagascar will be somewhere over here. It's probably under the clouds. Then the satellite keeps going until it eventually reaches Antarctica, which is which is, which is just very shining bright in the infrared but it's so noisy that we can't see anything the actual main image resolution you get from GAC is kind of comparable to APT on average it's going to be the same or slightly worse than APT although you do get all five channels so you can actually produce nice false color composites that you would not normally be able to get from APT you also don't get other instruments from APT unless you record DSB as well but we are not gonna talk about that HIRS is the high it's something with infrared okay okay there we go you, you just need to pick a correct channel you can see something this could be useful but but because it's an instrument with many different low resolution infrared channels set dump actually gives you many different composites for like actual useful analysis of the data of the atmosphere stuff like that if you're into that this is something you probably want to take a look at let's see can we get false color and here we also have the space environment environment monitor the sem and you can see with this pass it, it makes a bit more sense than before even though it's still quite noisy we have random data points thrown around the planet but this is sort of the track that the satellite took this kind of view it's sort of just a basic overview of the data what this instrument does is as the satellite is flying it samples the radiation levels basically and set dump takes each of those samples and then assigns them a color value so blue is low and then the gradient would be up to like red is high radiation and you can actually sort of see it here that the radiation starts picking up once the satellite is getting close to the North Pole because that's sort of where the magnetic lines of the Earth go down, dip down and the radiation will be stronger. This is where you have your Aurora Borealis, your Northern Lights will be forming in these areas where the radiation gets higher. The exact same thing happens above Antarctica. You can actually sort of see it here the radiation increases then it decreases again because normally of course if you have aurora if you have northern lights or southern lights i guess they sort of appear as a as a ring around the pole so the radiation gets higher as the satellite is transitioning that sort of area that sort of ring which in this mercator projection would just be a line somewhere like that and then the radiation actually gets lower again we can't really see it on the north pole because the satellite started GAC transmission here and then went backwards so all of this data would be transmitted from the next transmission once you start imagining what actually happens with the orbits once you actually see a full orbit it's, it makes much more sense hopefully we are going to be able to see that in the future on this channel but you get the idea as I said all of these random readings are misplaced because the timestamps because the the signal quality was so low it was so noisy the timestamps got corrupted and set dump basically just couldn't assign these readings to this proper orbit so you can just ignore those once you start accumulating more of these passes it would be much more interesting to actually combine multiple of these maps multiple of these readings if you actually get a full pass then maybe something like the mercator projection is is better suited for that because you actually want to see the other half of it as well but for now i think that's going to be all 
here if you adjust the center coordinates of the azimuth projection it's sort of better when you get a partial pass like this maybe we can go a bit further east and then of course to save the image here you have safe projected image it saves it as a png file you can then crop it you can do whatever you want with it there's many other functions in set dump again there will be a link in the description to the website to where you can read about that that's gonna be it for this video okay get, get this out of here okay this this is nice let's look at this for the outro this is beyond saving the the quality is bad okay uh anyway that's going to be it for this video i think i've covered everything that i wanted the entire process from receiving the signal to recording decoding demodulating and showing it, saving the final PNG file. I'm a bit sad that we were not able to get a better image because this is still only about half of the transmission. So look at the aspect ratio and that's actually corrected. The full GAC transmission will be almost twice as long. But as I said, I do have an S-band converter on the way. It, it should arrive next week as at the time of recording. So that's probably what the next video is going to be about. And I'm hoping that thanks to that converter I'm going to be able to get much better GAC than in this video so that's sort of going to be like a vague continuation of this topic while all the more focusing on the converter so if you'd be interested in that make sure you're subscribed thank you again for watching thank you for hanging around while I was not uploading anything and I will see you in the next video